Oh yeah, I love music. I love people to see people enjoying themselves to the music I was making. That to me was that to me was enough. I'd have I'd have played for nothing really. But uh I love music, I think all types of music. I love it. I mean I always used to say when I was playing and if I'm sweating they should be sweating, you know? No, he he, he wasn't a he wasn't a dancing man at all. My mother would dance around the floor all night. I would say my school in particular was, uh, it was a laugh. Um, you didn't learn much. And p the teacher sometimes was never on time. Um, bad tempered, very bad tempered. Sometimes when you would, a if you ask a question, he couldn't answer you. He liked to smoke in, in school. And um, he would knock you, knock your head off with a big ring if you weren't behaving properly. And I was one of the ones that got regularly rammed by the head by a big knuckle. He, he had no respect for anybody, anybody. He had no respect for anybody at all. But if you were a rich farmer's son, and then you got to sit up the front. But if you're a poor person like me, you got to sit in the back. I was a, I was a kind of a singer. I was always singing, and uh, a bit fidgety, fidgety, I suppose. But I was, I was always singing. I know you weren't allowed to sing. I used to do it on purpose sometimes, just to get him annoyed. <laughs> priest. Um, I was a kind of uh, a pet with a priest uh, because I used to um, serve in Mass. I used to serve at weddings and I used to serve at funerals. So when a funeral came up, I was, even though it was a sad thing, I, I was very happy because I knew I was going to get out of school at two o'clock and I knew that if there was a, a funeral in our church, I would be going to serve at it. So I'd be leaving school about quarter to two. I wouldn't be going back, I'd go back home afterwards. I served at quite a few funerals from the time I was probably 11 up to about 12, 13. I served at quite a few funerals. And plus the fact that my grand died and my grandfather died and uh, uncles and aunts and things like that, neighbors. I mean, it was all, um, it was all uh, a little bit, a little bit morbid at the time, you know. Um, most people of my age, they, they would go to a funeral because they get, always got an orange. But uh, I was never afraid of, of uh, going to funerals. I was never afraid of of uh, seeing dead people. It didn't bother me because, uh, I mean, what could they do? Nothing. The people are dead. Such, there's nothing frightening about that. It, it's only all in your mind, you know. It was all lies, and that scared me because I was lied to for years. And I, my mother and myself and my family, we were all lied to for years about religion. And that, that did scare me because if you can go and believe that, then you, you're so gullible you believe anything. And that's why right now I wouldn't believe a thing about Catholicism, not one word. No, it wasn't difficult because my siblings uh, didn't grow up with me. Um, by the time I sort of started throwing my nappy on the bushes, they had all left home. They had all emigrated to uh, to England, and uh, I was the last one left. No, I never felt abandoned by my siblings. No, I, because I knew I knew what they had to do. 
Do you know they moved that so gradually? I didn't, I didn't. I didn't feel. I didn't even know they'd gone half the time. They, they'd moved out gradually, you know. I knew if if we all stayed, we'd starve. One of the reasons I left was they were feeding me, and I couldn't. I couldn't stay there. I couldn't stay there. I thought I have got to go, and I did. My father, he he never liked to see anyone leaving. If if there was somebody leaving for England or something like that, my father would go for a walk. He wouldn't he wouldn't be there to see them see them going. He he'd go for a walk. And um, when they were gone, he'd come home. And it's strange how he used to do that. And I I said to him one day, I said, why do you always go away when people are leaving? And he said, that's just, it's just habit. Well, I knew what it was. Um, he, he was sad to see them going because he knew he couldn't provide for them. He knew. And uh, he was sad. Oh dear, here we go. My mother, oh. She was the best. She was the best. Heart was as big as herself. She loved the fag, loved the smoke. But uh, she was, she was the best. There'll never be, in my mind, anything like her. You know, I adored her. She was a strict woman, but she was beautiful. Oh, jeez, yes, you're brilliant. You're brilliant, you know. He'd be, he'd, he'd, um, he'd do anything for you. He'd do anything for you. He was a good father in every respect. Mm. He was a uh, he was quiet. You know he worked so hard, and it it just to it just to worry my mother to see him working so hard. But you know he'd say, "Well, never mind. I'm well able for it." But I know c coming to the end that he wasn't. Although his heart was brilliant, that's what killed him in the end. Uh, I wasn't there. And she died of cancer. And I, d well, I didn't even know that she was in the hospital. We got to the church just as if as the mass was ending in Kells. But we we see it through. Worst day of my life. The very worst. God it was bad. He uh, he got a he got a heart attack. He got a heart attack, and um, he didn't. He didn't get out of it. But um, it was a harrowing time, a real harrowing time. It really was for all of us because you know the situation being that we were all away at that time. Oh, home was, oh, home was heaven. Home was heaven. Because home was comfort, home was security. You know, close the door, big fire. Do I consider Ireland home? Oh, God, no, I don't consider Ireland home. No. No, never. Never. I, c I couldn't ever say it's home. I would never refer to Ireland as home. Home is where I live now. And uh, where I live now, that's home. That's that's my home. 
Ireland, no. Ireland's not my home. Um, they might surprise you to hear that, but Kells means nothing to me. The connections I have are graves. That's the connections I have. There's no other connections I have, only graves. In one word, yes. Yes, I do hate it, yes. I hate Ireland. For what it did to my family, for what it did to my father, working three or four jobs, getting pennies, my mother doing the same, working in the fields. You know, they, they worked hard to feed us. And you know, I don't think they were actually feeding themselves because they were feeding us. And that's why I hate it, because it gave them nothing. It took everything, but gave them nothing. I would say I was lucky in life, yeah. I would say I was lucky in life. You know, I was I was the the blue eyed boy. You couldn't I couldn't describe how spoiled I was. Absolutely rotten. Absolute love. Uh, I I adored my mother and Granny Man and I adore them. They were you know they'd do everything for me, see me coming and the arms would be out and uh, I always got me a few bowed before I left and they all just spoiled with love, pure love uh, that was great it was it was a lovely feeling and a young, for a young lad to walk away from granny and see her crying you know, it was a lovely feeling <laughs> If you have somebody that you can sit down and talk to and that understands what you're saying and understands the meaning of what you're saying, the majority of people around me at the moment, I couldn't do that because there's nobody that will understand me. Do you, can you understand that? 